Today we're going to look at symmetry and transformations. A line of symmetry divides a shape into equal parts. So you can see here we have a triangle, an isosceles triangle, it's the same on both sides. There's a line of symmetry that goes right down the middle of it. There are no other lines of symmetry that we could possibly make where we'd be able to split it into even parts. This is the only line where we'd be able to, uh, if, if we put a mirror up to it, if we put a mirror up to it, it would be the mirror image on both sides. So for our isosceles triangle here, there's one line of symmetry. The order of line symmetry is the number of possible lines of symmetry. So for our initial uh, our isosceles triangle here, our order of line symmetry is one. The order of rotational symmetry is the number of times a shape makes an exact copy of itself if you were rotating it through 360 degrees. So if we were looking at the order of line symmetry here of an equilateral triangle, I can have one, two, three, um, three lines of symmetry going, going through my equilateral triangle. So the order of line symmetry of an equilateral triangle is three. The order of rotational symmetry, if I was to take the triangle and rotate it around, I would be able to find a point where the, the point that's pointing up would be over here, and they would all have rotated one third of the way around. I could do that another two times until I got back to the start. So it means that there are three, uh, three different uh, possible rotational uh, symmetries that I'm going to be able to make with this equilateral triangle. So the order of rotational symmetry for the equilateral triangle here is also three. Reflection is what is called an isometric transformation. Isometric means that we're not actually changing the shape in any way. So we're transforming it, we're moving it, we're shifting it, we're uh, flipping it around and doing things with it, but we're not changing the size of it, not changing the shape at all. So reflection is an isometric transformation. So this isometric transformation gives an image, okay, so a, a picture or a copy, a copy of the object or shape without changing its size or shape. So the image of point A is called a dash, okay, so we put a, a dash above the A to show that this point is an image, a copy of point A, and it's and it's had something done to it. It's had had a transformation, an isometric transformation occur on it. So if we're going to reflect a shape or an object, we need to have something to reflect it around or about. So what we can do is we can draw in a mirror line, and that's what this is here. This is our mirror line. So here is our original shape, A, B, C, D, E, F. We've named each of the vertices of our shape here. If this is our mirror line, then we were to hold up a, if we were to hold up a mirror here, the shape would be reflected exactly around that mirror line. So each point, each point is the exact same distance, uh, or, or each point of the image is the exact same distance as the point and the object is from the mirror line. So here, the distance from A to the mirror line is exactly the same as the different distance from A dash to the mirror line. Distance from B to the mirror line is the same distance as, dis as B dash. So we can see here that each of the points here is reflected about this mirror line, reflected about it. So each of our uh, vertices, A dash, B dash, C dash, D dash, E dash, F dash, has its corresponding point. So this here is our image. Another isometric transformation is rotation. So once again, an isometric transformation just means we're, we're moving it around, rotating it, flipping it, but we're not, we're not actually going to change the shape in any way. So rotation uh, involves the center of rotation, so a point that we rotate our shape or our object around, and also an angle of rotation that says how far or how much we need to rotate around that centre. We also need to know what direction that is. So it's either going to be clockwise, the same direction as the clock travels, or anti-clockwise or counterclockwise, which is the opposite direction. So here we have an object that we've got, or a triangle, uh, triangle ABD, and we are rotating it 
through 90 degrees clockwise around C. So we've rotated the whole lot around and you can see that as we rotate around each of these points kind of travels in an arc. It travels in an arc around this centre. An arc around this centre. So we can see, we can see that each of these points travels uh, a diff travels, travels a different distance, but they all rotate around this point C through 90 degrees. So in this instance, our centre of rotation is located here, centre of rotation, and our angle of rotation is 90 degrees clockwise. Translation is an isometric transformation that involves just shifting a shape, so moving it up, down, left or right. So to describe a translation, we need to state how many units the shape has shifted in each direction. So it could, it might be shifted in a number of these different directions. It might be shifted up uh, three units and, and to the right five units. Uh, and, and we need to describe how many units and how far we have translated, how far we have moved that shape or that object. So let's have a look at some examples here. The first example looks at symmetry. So what we need to do is give the order of line and rotational symmetry for the following shapes. So for our rectangle here, our line symmetry, the only mirrors that we can make is one down the center and one across the midway. So there are two lines of symmetry that we can possibly do. We can't do a, a diagonal because if we were to mirror that, then this point here wouldn't, wouldn't exactly overlap uh, the, the other side. So there's no diagonals here, that doesn't work. Uh, it, it's only vertically and horizontally. So the order of line symmetry is two. As we rotate our rectangle around as well, we could see that as we rotate it around, we would get to a point where we had rotated it so it was upside down, and that would be fitting perfectly over our original shape. And then we could continue rotating that another 180 degrees until we rotated it through 360 degrees. So there are two possible uh, fits as we're rotating it. So the order of rotational symmetry is also two. So our rotational symmetry there, order two. For our regular pentagon here, we've got a cent the centre of our pentagon, and uh, we can we can see how we can split it. Um, to mirror, we can mirror it through that axis or through this one, through there, through here, and through here. There are five different uh, lines of symmetry that we can possibly have. So the line symmetry for our regular pentagon is an order five. As we rotate through, we can see that uh, if we rotate through one fifth of a whole rotation, then this point here will be at this location here and it will be matching again. So as we rotate it, there'll be five different um, ways that we can, we can get it to fit exactly as we rotate it through 360 degrees. So the rotational symmetry for our regular pentagon here is going to be five as well. Now what we've been given is we've been given an image of this, uh, or, or we've, we've been given the shape here, A, B, D, E, and we need to draw the image of this shape uh, once we've done a few different uh, kind of transformations to it. So the first is a reflection, the second is a rotation, and the third is a translation. So for the first one, reflect it in the y-axis. So the y-axis is this, is this axis here. So that is going to be our mirror line. Our mirror line is going to be the y-axis. So as we reflect it, we're going to be reflecting it over onto the other side of the y-axis. So each of the points is going to have the exact same distance from the image to the, uh, to the object. So I can measure that or I can just have a look at each point and see where it's going to be placed. So if, if A is here at uh, negative one, negative one, then we can put uh, A dash, the image of A over here at positive one, negative one. You can see that the x value has just become positive. For this one here, the b value um, uh, or, or our coordinates of b are negative 1, negative 2, and here they've become positive 1, negative 2. So it's only the x value that's changing. We can see that we've reflected the whole lot here. 
negative 3 here becomes positive 3 here. Negative 3 here becomes positive 3 here. So here is our shape that has been reflected about our y-axis here. A, A dash, B dash, D dash, E dash. If we're looking at rotating our shape through 90 degrees clockwise about C, we've been told that C is our centre point here. So if we're rotating clockwise, that means that we're going to need to rotate our object up in this direction, in this direction, clockwise here. And if we're rotating through 90 degrees, rotating 90 degrees, that means we could draw a circle around this point here, around the C point, and see how we're going to move it through, and move it through 90 degrees. So here, 90 degrees, a 90 degree angle. So we can see, for this, for this shape here, we've brought it up, and we're rotating it through up each of these different points 90 degrees from this point here to this point here. So A becomes A dash up here, B becomes B dash, and you can see our whole shape has been rotated up into the next quadrant up here, into the top left hand quadrant, to, uh, to be rotated by 90 degrees. For our translation, all we're doing is shifting. We're shifting our our shape and we're shifting it five units to the right and three units up. So each point here, if we look at A, five units to the right, one, two, three, oh, oh sorry, one, two, three, four, five. I've, I've made a mistake here and not answered the question properly. So here, our shape shouldn't be actually here. We need to shift it five units to the right. So shape or point A should be going one, two, three, four, five, and then three units up, one, two, three. So this is where A dash should be. B, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three. B dash should be here. Uh, our E dash should be one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three should be here. And our D should D dash should be one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three. So I've only shifted the shape over four units to the right. That purple shape there is only four units to the right and three units up. So this is should be the location of that shape if it was done correctly. So this should be D dash here and this should be E dash here. So we can see that when we're translating, we need to make sure we're paying very close attention to how many units we're shifting it to the right and how many units we're shifting it up. Each of these covers all of the different isometric transformations that we're going to be looking at. Reflection, rotation, so our reflection was here, our rotation up here, and our translation as well.